It was not recording. Ah, now it's recording. Good. Hello. <laughs> it is recording. Okay. Now, silence, silence. Okay, so yes, uh, Raghav. You. Anand. Limitless. Adarsh. Adarsh. Ideal. <laughs> Stuti. Stuti means worshipping. We don't know. You must know. Name of the word of your Meaning of your name. Aryan means Aryan race. Aryan, you know, the race, North Indian race. They came, there is an Aryan invasion theory. In India. But, anyways, I don't know whether it's true or not. What's your name? Vedansh. Medhansh. So, Ansh of Medha. Medhavi. Talent. Part of talent. Become full talent. Okay? Yeto. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> so, Vaishnavi, Devi, Akshar. Akshar. Akshar means unhurt is Akshar. Chak means hurt. Akshar means he can't be hurt. Okay, I forgot it. What? Oh, I keep keep monitoring and keep keep guiding me that you stay away. Okay. Chak close. I am going to take maths in there. I own mathematics. Physics was my part time job. Sir. Last time. Sir. Sir. I teach both. Don't worry. Why are you laughing? Who are these people? Sir. Lots of people. I am connected to you individually as well. So those who have, yeah, please come. 
See, uh, first of all, uh, you mean who discovered? Ah, uh, now Shraddha is asking who discovered. Now tell me whether mathematics was invented or discovered.
green. And uh, all your alpha, beta, gamma and miseries of your life is because of that civilization. Isn't it? Now, why was that? That, you know, everything was happening in Greece. Uh, if, you, if you see, what do you know about Indian Spanish civilization? Any, any characteristic? So they are they are perfect city planning. Yeah. Yeah, perfect city planning. That means drainage, road roadways, and uh, yes, uh, railways, public parking, you know that, and brick lane structure. All these were characteristic yeah, so features. Royalty and the right. Uh, Egyptian pyramids. Pyramids. And uh, anyone has visited Egypt by chance? No, you, you, have, you have seen pyramids? Tell me uh, some characteristics of pyramids. First thing which gives you awe, what is its size, the magnitude, my god, the expanse of it. And this was before any crane, helicopter or anything in this Right? One stone block of tons have to be taken to let's say 50 feet high point. How was that possible? Without having knowledge of inclined plates, geometry, angles, and all that, do you think it was possible? Very difficult, right? Can you lift uh, all, all of you together? Can you lift a stone of one ton? No. What do you need? Let's say you are in Egypt now. Then, so what I'm trying to say is, all the civilizations were busy in, let's say, applying the knowledge. There was one civilization which was busy in building the building the body of knowledge, and that was Greece. Okay. So uh, Thales existed around seventh century BC, right? And uh, how it how it happened was people didn't have internet that time, no Instagram, right? Don't be on Instagram. I'm stalking you. So. Uh, uh, there was no internet. There's no internet. No. Listen, listen, all of you. So, what was happening? People didn't have much job, many jobs to do. So, what did they do? They were gazing stars. Yes, actually. And that's how astronomy came into being. Okay, and astronomy is mother of many, many sciences. And till today, lots of sciences are coming out of astronomy. And today, what a science theta cos theta, which you learn was a direct fallout of astronomy, geometry, direct fallout of astronomy. Why people were interested in tracing the stars, the movement of the stars, and how are they behaving? Because that time religion had a lot of say in human civilization. And people used to think that all these bright stars up there in the sky, the moon, the meteorites and all that, are messengers of God. And they are trying to send a message which we humans must decipher to take ourselves to the next level. Okay, there was lightning, and people used to get, you know, frightened that maybe God is angry, and hence lightning strikes somewhere. Some people get killed. You understand? And they understand. They they take it as okay. Uh, we must have done some sin, and hence God is taking revenge on us or whatever. He is punishing us or whatever. Correct? So that's how it all started. Then came, you know, uh, I was talking about these Greek people we, who started uh, putting brains behind whatever was happening. And you remember I gave you the story of trivium and quadrivium last year? Anyone remembers trivium and quadrivium? Did I tell the story in English? No. Hey, there were three subjects, four subjects in Greek schools. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The trivium, the word trivia, trivia comes from the root word trivium. Trivium means very common, very, you know, Less important in, in current uh, parallel physics, less important. That time, trivium was a set of three subjects which every Greek student has to go through by, by default. Right? For example, 10th grade is considered to be by default, everyone has to get a matriculation certificate. Same way as in Greek schooling, trivium. What all subjects? Logic. Then, grammar. Then, metaphysics, which is called religion. Somewhat related, related to religion. Right? So these were the three subjects people used to study. Right? So logic was the key word. So people started asking questions. Why are there stars? Why is this? What is this, you know, so flat surface where all of us are inhabiting? So people started asking questions. What, why, when, where, like that. And they started exploring where have we come from. This led to the, you know, the, the birth of subject called philosophy. 
Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, all these people, they have started thinking, where have we come from? And today, whatever physics you've studied, let's say, dates back to Big Bang, by elaborating on this question, where have we come from, where have we come from, where have we come from, now today we know that we have come from 13.7 billion years ago, there was a big explosion somewhere in space. And that's, that's, that's what we know so far. Yeah, we don't know before that what happened. Right? This was the quest and it took around more than 2000 years, 2500 years for us to come to this conclusion. Okay? So, came Thales, then came a guy called Pythagoras. Who was he? Why do you know Pythagoras? What for? Pythagoras. Why is it called Pythagoras? He is the one who? He is the one who? Discovered it? Invented it? No. He was the guy who proved it. Pythagoras' theorem was known in Mesopotamia in 15th century BC. Pythagoras existed in 5th century BC. So 1000 years before Pythagoras was on this earth, people were aware that in the right angle triangle, the, sum, the square of the sum, uh, sorry, the sum of the squares of two sides will be equal to the square of the hypotenuse, right? Pythagoras and his sect, he started a sect, Pythagoreans there, they used to you know, call themselves Pythagoreans and it's a very closed group, it, the entry was not easy. These, this bugger proved what? Pythagoras? Yeah. yeah. And now you have, you have seen multiple theorems proving this, that and all that. Animations? Yeah? You know this, what I'm talking about. Anyway, so uh, that was Pythagoras. Then came a very famous guy. You, you know him. His name is What's his name? Euclid. Euclid. When was he? Third century BC. What was happening in India then? We were trying to defend Alexander. Maurya Empire. Maurya Empire. Chandragupta Maurya was the king that time. And then uh, Alexander had invaded India. And we were trying to defend him, you know, our own motherland and all that was happening in Indian context. Meanwhile in Greece, this guy was busy writing a book, which has become a problem for you guys today. And the name of the book was? The Elements. Have you heard of this thing? Hey, you've been studying mathematics, 9th grade class. Yeah, the Elements. Ah, there was a Euclidean geometry was there. So he wrote a book called? Elements. And this was 30 volume book. In which he has covered number theory, he has covered geometry and what not. And he was the, I, I will be startled and you know astonished to know that Euclid's Elements is the second most popular book after the Bible. Those many books, copies have been sold over the in, in the world. Second most, the third volume uh, book he, which he wrote was a, and this is the book which lots of stalwarts have studied and changed the world. Newton being one of them. Forma, another one. Forma, have you heard of this thing? In mathematics, Forma. F-E-R-M-A-T. People call them, call it Forma. It's Forma. Okay? So lots of Star Wars, you know? Then all these, you know, uh, all these Greek philosophers you know, Archimedes, uh, Socrates, Plato, uh, Eurydotus, then uh, this guy called uh, Euclid himself, then Archimedes. All these people contributed something to the and that time it was not it was not called mathematics, it was just logic. People were doing logic and they were coming up with several theories and all. Then came Christ and things changed forever. Why? Because from first century BC, no sorry, first half, or roughly around that time, till 15th century AD, a span of 1500 plus years, 1600 years, it's called Dark Age. Why? No development in mathematics and science. Yes, here and there, for example, uh, in 10th century, yes, Indians were developing their own set of uh, this thing. So, in, in around 7th century AD, zero came up. So, till 6th, 7th century AD, no one knew zero. There was no value of zero at all in any of these mathematics, you know, uh, literature. So, there was no zero, no talk about it, right? So, 6th century Aryabhata, you know, right? And how zero came into being. Nothingness was now represented by a symbol. Yeah, so coming back to that 1 and 2 and 3, these are all philosophies, these are not invented stuff. Oneness is a philosophy, 
unit is a philosophy. You represent it by a symbol. Isn't it? Duality, two type, is a philosophy. There are two clear cut distinct things or maybe ideas. All these are philosophies. So hence to represent this philosophy, you came up with a symbol. And now today it's two. Yeah, in Roman uh, system it was I and I. Right? So I, uh, this was the story and then what happened? Uh, in, uh, so till that time people were busy or uh, before Christ, all these Greek uh, history which I was giving to you. People did only two things. One was geometry. Another was number theory. Today what you study as real numbers and number system was part of that number theory. You could also did a lot of work on number theory. Prime numbers, composite numbers, perfect numbers, this, that, number theory, and geometry. So all you, when you learn Pythagoras' theorem and similar triangles, complement triangles, circles, tangents, secants, everything was developed before Christ itself. Okay? Then in the 10th century AD, there was a guy in Arab world, and Arab world was also, you know, very much rich in mathematics. They came up with a very unique, a very important topic in mathematics. And that's what? That's what? Algebra. Algebra. Right? The word algebra itself, it says AL. So you have, where do you see AL quite often? Burj Al Arab. Al, Al, Al. Everywhere Al is in Middle East. So algebra came from there. And the root word is algebra. Algebra, where you have unknowns are dead. So there was a guy called Al Khwarizmi. What was his name? A L K H W A Rizmi. R I R I Z M I. Al Khwarizmi. Today the word algorithm which you use is coming from that guy. Al Khwarizmi. Today we call it algorithm. Correct. So Al Khwarizmi was the guy who came to India. And he was the guy who developed, right, where you started dealing with unknowns. And then he took Indian numeric system, including zero, to Arab world. Okay, there they started using Indian uh, our one two three four five six to zero this number system. Then there was another guy in 11th century AD called Fibonacci. Have you heard of him? Yeah. He was an Italian. He came to Arab to, to understand mathematics. He figured out, oh my god, there is a very brilliant place value system which is used in Arab world. Hindu Arabic. Hindu Arabic. Now it is called Hindu Arabic now because we have proved that it is the, the source belongs to our own you know, system. Then he took this system to Western Europe. But no one paid attention to him. Till 16th century. When there is a famous event which took place in Europe, what is that called? Renaissance. Renaissance. Reformation of the Renaissance. When everything started, everyone started revisiting old concepts and all those Euclidean geometry, all that Pythagoras' theorem, and everything started, you know, the dark age is over, the church controlled over civilization is kind of over, people started revolting, Luther King, Kelvin, all these people. You know, came up, they started denying whatever church was trying to impose on to them. Then free thinking started and hence came a guy called Galileo Galilei. And he changed the world forever. Then came a very, very famous guy, Mr. Sir Isaac, Isaac Newton. Newton. And he devastated all your life. Destroyed. Simply. Isn't it? But yes, we are enjoying the benefits of whatever theory he gave. Correct? And after that, you know, let's see then, others, other, uh, uh, there was a very famous mathematician called Euler, who came up in 17th, 18th century. He, you know, gave up, uh, sorry, he, he gave the concept of something called imaginary numbers. So how can math be discovered? Right? So there is dichotomy. So there are places where you think that it is invented. And there are places where you think it is discovered. So people, mathematicians have two schools of thought. One school says no, it's invented. Another school says it is. Then you are dead. You are just, or in nature, you are just covering it. Right? 
Some time back, I had posted a this thing on my Instagram account. How many of you have seen that? There are four, four, uh, four pictures in one. Anyone noticed it? Oh, you guys are very, you know, good guys, and you are away from social media. So I don't follow you. Don't follow me. That's a sin. Follow. Okay. <laughs> Stay away from Instagram. If you, in case you, your mom and dad has an account, you can see that. So basically, what's common? Between, uh, can, have you seen lightning strike? Yeah. Have you seen a river delta? Yeah. yeah. I said it on WhatsApp. Okay. So there are four pictures I have shared. One was river delta. One was lightning strike. One was uh, nerve cell. Nerve, uh, sorry, the network of nerves within the body. And another was a branch tree. What's common? That's so, so, what is it, overwhelming for us. There is so much of similar patterns in nature. They are fractals. They are called fractals. When you go up in higher mathematics, you study. See, mathematics, don't find mathematics in books. Books are just a small representation of mathematics. Find mathematics around you. Don't find mathematics in books. It's not there. It's outside it. Yes, we have to go through a particular method to arrive at, you know, let's say, or uh, enjoy mathematics. But mathematics is not there in the books. Right? So in the last 300 years, we have developed a lot of mathematical concepts. We, number theory, these are the branches of mathematics you study. Number theory, which in your, this thing is called number system. I, don't, I think in autonomous syllabus, it's not there. Real numbers? You have real numbers? Anyway, so real numbers and properties of primes and all that stuff. Then there is algebra, which the part of which is linear equations, which we'll be dealing after this. Right? Algebra, in algebra, polynomials, linear equation, quadratic equation, and inequalities all are in algebra. Then we also study something like uh, we will be covering these things in, in this year. Binomial uh, theorem, then principle of mathematical induction. Then, uh, you know, uh, what else is there? Theory of equations are there. All this is algebra. Then there is a full fledged body of knowledge called geometry, where circles, triangles, quadrilaterals, and all properties are related to that will be studied. Then, geometry evolved, evolved into something called analytical geometry. There was, a, there was a philosopher in France called Rene Descartes. I, I told you last time, I don't know. Rene Descartes, and he was a very famous philosopher. Yeah, Cartesian coordinates. Come, the name Cartesian comes from right? Cartesian, C A R T E S I A N. Cartesian comes from the word Rene de Cart, and this guy, again, you know, this this he is the guy who fitted mathematics into anything in the world. So, for example, if you see this beam, this line, Rene de Cart fitted a curve here. If you see this fan, there is a curve. Right? There is a mathematics. All the shapes, every shape, he he linked geometry to algebra through a body of knowledge called, which you call as coordinate geometry. But it's called analytical geometry, otherwise. So we'll be studying analytical geometry as well. There's a very famous branch, a very important branch of mathematics called probability and statistics, where we also study something called combinatorics, the art of counting. Counting something without actually counting it. So 20 people are there, how many handshakes are possible? You can't really go and count, okay, one handshake, second handshake, third, fourth, no. There's an art of counting it, and we'll study that, all those things in combinatorics. And there's another very famous principle which we'll be studying that's called Pichibol principle in that combinatorics itself. These things, please hold your nerves, are not there in your 10th grade syllabus. Okay? But I think we have enough time to not only cover your 10th grade syllabus beautifully, and I expect all of you to score Minimum of 99% marks in mathematics. Minimum, I told you, not maximum. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and then we'll also touch upon elements of calculus, where we'll be discussing functions, differentiability, continuity, limits, and then integration. See, if you guys are really panicking, then don't do it because your counterparts, you must be knowing who those were in NAFL. IECC counterparts already do it. You know that, right? Yes. So hence, if they can do it, I don't see any reason why you guys can't do it. And the idea is simply this. Those who will show promise, 
promise and says, I will see that commitment in you. Rest assured, if we cover 11 grade portions of mathematics this year itself, next year, you will directly sit in 12th grade class. You will just skip 11th grade stuff. We will make sure that happens and you are on the go, on the way to let's say top 500 ranks in JE. Possibly, very much possible. If not under 100, that's my dream. I want to get published. My name should be published in Times of India. So, so you help me, help me get on to Times of India sometime later. Awesome. What is our Gada paper? Prajavani. Ah, Prajavani. What is that? Prajavani. Prajavani. So, Prajavani also. So, help me do that. Is it clear to you? Acha, we will also be having NTSC as well as Olympiad. I told you that we will be having a selection procedure for Olympiad classes. There is a, a around a, a 25, 28 weeks program of Olympiads. It will be directed towards regional mathematics Olympiad, not PRMO. PRMO is a useless exam. If you are preparing for PRMO, don't sit for our RMO class. Okay, so this, this preparation, again, only will be done by those who will be selected to an entrance process. We will tell you the dates, mostly second, next week it will be. And you have to write one exam. And if you are really good enough, so you will be allowed there to sit there. NTSC classes will be covered through our regular classes. As I told you, by June, your syllabus will be over mostly. Maximum, let's say July, NTSC exams happen in October, late, now, late October, November. And once we are done with our CBC 10th portion, we'll be having some uh, revision for 9th grade. So SAT is taken care of. Math exam is open to all, sorry, math classes. But it will be conducted online. Okay, so lots of uh, worksheets. Every week we'll fix up a schedule. Mostly it will be Saturday second half. So please keep your slots free, Saturday second half. Olympiad classes will happen early morning, Sundays. So those who are really Talented. Early morning, 6 to 8. Sunday. Not very early. So very early. Ah, so 6 to 8. If you are if you are ready to get up early, we can start at 4 o'clock also. So mass on a fair. Okay, so uh, be, be ready to embrace all such things. Okay. And uh, yes, I will make you put a lot of hard work this year. So if you are having backache, headache, remove all of them. Right? If you are going to multiple classes, my request to you is hold it for this year. Don't play badminton forever. Play for half an hour. Play, but don't play for five hours. Yeah? You have to see, I will be very, very blunt and open. You have to reprioritize your this thing. And once you start reprioritizing, you will see the results. So that's my that meant my entire focus will be at least five people should crack RMO from this batch. Our regional mathematics all of you are. We are preparing courses for Indian National Mathematics Olympiad as well. So those who will be clearing our will be getting the order for INFO as well. After INFO anyway, they will be taken care of by the camp, so we don't have any responsibility. Though we will be helping you, but that's something. Okay. And NDC, I want all of you to crack it. And if you don't crack it, then what happens? I have bought a bottle and I have kept it on my table. Okay? The bottle is made up of glass. And if you if you do like this, it will break. Okay? Now this is good enough hint for all of you. Okay? So if you by mistake do not clear NTSC, then meet you in. So let me not put it in on camera. So you understand? Guys, it's very much doable. It's very much doable. People of your age have only done it. And it's a very close-ended program. It cannot be easier than it is. Let me tell you. You have wrong myths in your... Myths are always wrong anyways. So, alright? In your head. I will tell you, we will tell you how to do it. But you have to commit. You have to do walk the path. I can't walk the path. path. It's very much, very easy. All of you can crack it. Mat is your strongest point, you can crack 95 plus in 100. SAT, we are even going to just, just imagine I am recording history lectures. My meat, history, right? Just for you, so that NT is still to check. Possible? 
Hey, you don't want you guys don't want me to be there in lines of video. I have a see. I want to die with this. That I want to be there on newspaper for good reasons. <laughs> right? That his students cried these these exams, not because he just go, went there and killed someone. Okay. Promise. Am I done? Entry C. If not done, can you know? Anjita, possible or not? Anyone believes it's not possible? Be honest, please. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that that you believe that it's not possible. I'll throw you out. It's very much possible. Hey, Entry. You you only said it's not possible. So when did I say so? Last time you were saying. Anyways. So. Any question? No. So let's start the journey of mathematics. And uh, as you are studying linear equations, so we'll go by linear equations. And I will be asking a lot of questions if you are not asking. So before I forget, I just do this. So linear equation is a part of what? 
This is the note, right? Yeah. So I told you, oh, I have to use my This is the word. Okay, and in algebra, so far you have studied something called polynomial. Have you studied this? Yeah. What is the polynomial? I don't even, oh my god, oh, no, no, it's, it's very much visible. <laughs> hey, so, what is the polynomial? Who said? What's your name? Akshar. Akshar, right? Yes, Akshar. Polynomial. What is the polynomial? More than three terms. Three terms. More than three terms. More than three terms. What is the term? First term, second term, third term. What is term? What is what? Term. Term. What is the term? Constant or variable. What is the term? Constant. So, so, this is a term? Yeah. Yeah. So, so term is a very basic uh, thing in algebra, very basic element of algebra. So, so term can be any combination of any combination. Combination means not plus or minus, not a sum and difference, but product or quotient. How do you lift it up? That's gone now. So I guess you have to change the mode. Oh, like you used to do that. The button is the button. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. No, the button is down here, the power is a difficult thing. Example? X less 
example, x, x plus 3 is a expression. It's an expression, right? Root x plus 5. The expression? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Or 3 plus 5. No. It's an expression. Yeah. It's a good term. You can actually simplify it like that. Right? Right? Now. Expression is clear. Right? Now, what are we seeing? There are three components. Three components. Please understand. Let's just say when I say root x, it is, it actually I am saying 1 and this dot represents multiplication, not a decimal point here. So 1 into x to the power of. Three things are there. This one is called? What is this called? Coefficient. Or constant. Right? What is this part? Variable. And what is this part? Easy. Next one. Degrees of polynomial. We will be talking about Okay? So all the terms which you will see will be a combination of in algebra. In, in trigonometry, the definition of terms change. Sin theta, sin x, sin y, etc. Right? So this is. Now, what is now a polygon? How is so we started with what? We started with term, then we went to expression. Now we are talking about polynomial. What is polynomial? What is polynomial? How is polynomial different from expression? Any of this? Expression having more than three terms is polynomial. Yes, no. Yes. How many of you say yes? Wait. So polynomials, characteristic of polynomials, how is polynomial different from expression is simply this. In any expression, the power of the variable can be anything. Can be anything. Real number, rational number, irrational number, whatever. But in polynomials especially, you cannot have powers, anything but integers or rather positive integers. So what is the polynomial therefore? Polynomial and how we denote polynomial is simply like this. When we deal with functions, I will go much deeper in that. But for, for the time being, you remember P and within braces, I am writing X. That means there is a polynomial whose variable is clear to everyone. This is polynomial in X. And the general expression for polynomial in X is this is equal to A naught. A not is a constant. Not is just to put an index to understand. I will not be using A, B, C, D, E, F, G because there could be infinitely many terms in a polynomial, right? But alphabets are only 26. So hence I am putting an index. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. So A not plus A1x to the power 1 plus A2x to the power 2 plus A3x to the power 3 plus Plus so on and so forth, and then we say a n x to the power x n, where we how many terms are there? How many terms are there? N plus one terms are there, isn't it? Look closely. There are n plus one terms. Why? It starts from zero. So one, two n n terms, then an extra n one. So there are n plus 1 terms where I am saying where a0, a1, a2, dot dot dot, an belongs to the set of real numbers. Now you have to understand this language. When we deal with set theory, you will be you know, comfortable. But for the time being, understand wherever you see this sign, this is called? So we have set. So we have oh, yeah, set. Right? So you know. This is R means set of real number. Any real number is okay. Okay? And then where n n belongs to Z Z plus means integer. Positive non non zero sorry uh, all positive integers. Is it okay? In fact, it can be zero as well. N can be. So I can say belongs to Hold on. 
numbers. See, uh, actually in mathematics we really don't deal with whole numbers and all that. Either they will we'll deal with integers. Whole numbers work you know, when you are just to explain the uses of that, but otherwise we talk only in terms of integers. And we'll say it's all non-negative. Non-negative. So this is our technique is the non-negative integer. So zero also is a non-negative. Is that clear to everyone? Term clear? Expression clear? Polynomial clear? Yes, it also depends on poly means. Poly means? Poly means? Many. Where else you have, you have come across this word poly? Polygon. Polygon. Polythene. Polymer. Polythene. Polymer. 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 So hence, polythene is nothing but polyethylene. Multiple ethylene molecules club together, linearizing. You know, you just break the double bond. Polymerization. And hence, we get polythene. Many polymer, polythene, right? Uh, polynomial. So polynomial means the word is monomial. Monomial is one term. You add two, it becomes binomial. You add another one, it becomes trinomial, and so on and so forth. So all, everything is called post polynomial. Clear? Clear? So this is polynomial. Now I am interested in seeing this. I am interested in visualizing a polynomial. And hence I told you there was a guy who made your life miserable. Again, there was a guy called René Descartes in France. He came up with a very beautiful mechanism of visualizing mathematics and he called it Cartesian coordinate system and hence now I am going to visualize visualize now for visualizing for visualizing for visualizing anything you need two things what do, what do things you need for visualization Think. What do you think you need for visualization? Eyes. Ah, beautiful. And? And you need something to see. Yeah, I is the tool. Paper. Exactly. You need two things. One is the picture, photo, and? Eyes. Eyes. Without photo, you can't see. But you can understand the brain. Yeah. And sunlight. Sunlight. Huh? Light. Come. Come, I'm praying. Good. How long? Understand the feelings. Okay, here. So, yeah. Hey, where are you? There. There. Something to eat? Now, what is that? What is that? Lollipop. Lollipop. Anyway, it's doing good. Anyway, yes. So uh, now I want to visualize it. So it's how to visualize. And here, you, if you pay attention, your you know coordinate geometry will also be covered. It's, it's not that we will not be covering it again. But if you have to visualize a point, what do we need? X and Y. What is the angle between these two lines? Can it be not some other line? Why? You need perpendicular. Why? Who says? The guy who made a friend. No, he didn't say that. He never said you have to have 90 degrees. Maybe it's easier. Yes. But it doesn't say that it cannot have any other angle. It can have. But most popular and most, most standard form today is Cartesian, right? It's called right handle orthogonal Cartesian coordinate system. What is it called? Right handle orthogonal Cartesian coordinate system. Why is it called like that? Huh? Right here. Oh, what's that? Orthogonal 
Cartesian, sorry, I am talking about the, Cartesian, the coordinate system which we use today. We call it right-handed orthogonal Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, Cartesian. Every word has a meaning. Cartesian coordinate. What, what is the meaning of each word? Yes, please pay attention. Right-handed. I will tell you why it is called right-handed a little bit uh, later. Orthogonal means mutually perpendicular. Cartesian from Ben and Descartes. Cartesian. Off card, hence Cartesian. Coordinate because there are uh, you know, uh, multiple numbers together. So hence, coordinate system is the system of this particular mechanism. Coordinate system. Now, why right-handed? Because, now let us say x and y. We know that there are three coordinates. The third is? Z. Z. Now, whether z should come this way or should be inside the board? So you are right. For that, you need right hand. And that is the rule. So you put your x, you know, your palm along the x, curve your finger towards y, and the stress thumb will give you z axis. Hence, it is called right hand. Right. So whenever you get x. Yeah. So how is then? If you take a negative x, then it should be all the other. Yes. If you take x here and y like this, then you put x, y, and the stress thumb. Oh my god. <laughs> stress thumb coming out of the board. Hence it is called? Right. We have to have a standard, right? See, Aniya talks about something and then no one understands. <laughs> because it's not standard. Right? Aniya, correct now? So, standard is your communication. So, I don't mind, I just keep doing your best. So, x, y, z. Correct? Understood? Now, when this coordinate system, you can imagine the corner as x, y, z. See, any corner of the room is like a right hand coordinate system. x, y, then x to y, up. See, x, y, z. Clear to everyone? Any doubt so far? Now, what Mr. Ka yeah, uh, René Descartes said is, each, the moment you fix a Cartesian coordinate system anywhere, what does it mean? Let's say I want this point to be my origin and I define x, I define y and I define z. Then each point in space can be uniquely defined using three numbers only. Yeah. Each point in space, all of you are sitting, all of you have now three, a set of three numbers which define your position. Correct? That's the basis of definition of point in a Cartesian coordinate. System. So we are not going to third dimension right now. We will restrict all our analysis in two dimensions. Is that okay? So hence we are not considering uh, in your 12th grade you will study 3D geometry as well. But right now in 10th grade and if time permits towards the end will anyways go to 3D geometry. Right now we will do only 2D geometry. So X and Y. So any point in that plane. Now which plane is it? The plane of that uh, uh, This board. Right? Which is defined as XY. Plane. Why? Because x and y coordinates are defined in this plane. Any odd point if you draw and you draw perpendiculars, hence orthogonal system. Like that. And measure this distance. Let's say this is called by y. Or x. And this point P is denoted by x comma y. This is called ordered pair. Why? Why ordered pair? Why is it not ordered pair and x comma Because if you reverse x and y, you get some other another point. You reach another point. Correct? So this is called Cartesian coordinate system. Clear? Everyone? This is point. Yes. Any doubt? Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah? Any doubt so far? Anyone? Please talk to me. Go. So distance from, okay. This is called Apsica. Distance from y axis is called x coordinate. Yeah. How far is this point from y axis? It's called x coordinate. Okay, and how far it is from y y axis is uh, x axis is called y, y coordinate. Is that clear? Clear? So hence this distance is x. So here it will be x comma zero. This point. X comma zero. And what will be this point? Zero comma y. Is it clear? This point is zero comma. Clear? Right? And now why am I discussing all this? Is now that you know how to 
how to express a point on a plane. Now we'll see how to visualize a polynomial on a, on a graph paper or a XY coordinate system. Is that clear? And hence all this discussion. Now, what was, it, what was the topic? Topic was how to visualize a polynomial. How to visualize a polynomial on a Cartesian coordinate system. Let us start with a polynomial. Y is equal to, or rather, what, what did I tell you? I didn't talk about y at all. I talked talk about p of x is equal to, let us say, a naught plus a1 x. Okay? There could be other terms as well. a1 x square plus, achha, let me first talk about that itself. A n x minus. Okay. Now there are a few other uh, important things you must know. N is called the degree of polynomial. Degree of degree of okay. So when n equals to zero, it's a constant term. Isn't it? If you put n equals to 0, highest term will be a naught. That's it. You can't go to a one x because n is 0. Here, the power is 1. So you can't go up even there. So when n is 0, it's a constant. Is this clear? Any doubt? Now, when n is 1, it is called? Linear. Now, why linear? I'll come to in a bit while. And when n is 2, it's called? When n is 3? When n is 4? Plus 
root x y. What is the degree? What is the degree? It's not a Like that. 
It will come. It will come in 3D space. Okay. Linearity is clear. Clear. Everyone. Correct. Very good. Now. Now. In the you know uh, in the, the ninth grade you have studied linear equations in one way or another. You didn't study linear equations. Oh, you studied two variables. What all did we cover in uh, ninth grade? Okay, now we'll come to, let us say, you know, simultaneously we'll learn now. Now what I'm trying to say is, now let us say if I'm equating a polynomial to a fixed value, then the polynomial expression gets converted into a equation. equation. Now we're talking about algebraic equation. Whenever you compare or let's say equate a polynomial expression, with any value, any fixed or variable value, again, then the entire thing becomes a equation. It's like a beam balance. There is the polynomial on one side and there is a value on the other side and you're trying to balance it. This thing is called equation. Do you get the difference between expression and equation? Any people get confused. What is the difference between expression and an equation? An equation is very Exactly. So, expression never talks about an equality sign. Expression is just a, a combination of terms. Now, the moment you equate, the moment you equate meaning, the moment you have something comparable to this expression, and you you say that this particular value is equal to this expression, it becomes an equation. So, now our purpose of today's lecture is to understand linear equations. So first of all, the polynomial, polynomial of polynomial of which degree we are talking about? One. One. So we are not talking about anything of two and threes and all that. That will be cubic and quadratic and all that. We are not going to discuss that. We will limit our discussions to only linear expressions equated to something. Then it becomes a linear equation. If the equation has only one variable, it will be equation, linear equation in one variable. If the equation is, is having two variables, Okay, what, what do I mean? Let us say, let me take two different polynomials. First is, first polynomial is, let's say, P of X is equal to A0 plus A1X. This is, and, and then I am equating this thing to, let us say, 5. It becomes, what is this? This is linear equation in one way, okay, not two way. A naught plus A one x equal to five. One linear way. equation in one way. Right? Let us say I have an equation in x and y where I am saying A one x or now in terms of your book also A x plus B y plus C. Is it a is it a polynomial in two way? Equate it to anything constant and here I am using zero. Let us see. It becomes linear equation in two variables. Clear? Clear to everyone? Linear equation in two variables. If it have ax plus by plus, so let us say p of x comma y comma z is equal to ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. This is linear equation in Three variables. Linear equation in three variables. And there is no limit to it. You can keep on adding variables and equating it to clear. Now the definition of linear equation in two variables is clear. Why is it called linear equation or sharp? Why is it called linear? The word linear itself has a word called line. So because its expression or when you visualize it, you get a straight line, hence it is called linear. Is it okay? Clear to everyone? Now, the idea is, can, now the thing is, what is meant by solution of a Right? So there are, there are a couple of terms. One is called zero of a polynomial. What is it called? Zero of a polynomial or roots of a Equation, you get a difference? Yeah. I am talking about zero of a polynomial. I will not I will not say zero of a 
equation. I will got zero of a polynomial means what is the value of variable, whatever number it is, x, y, z, whatever, which makes the entire polynomial reduced to zero. That that value of x and y or whatever number of variable is it in there is called the zero of the polynomial. Got it? So let's say if I have a polynomial p x is equal to x plus five. Yeah. So what is the zero of the polynomial? Minus five. Minus five. Because if you put x equals to minus five, you will get the value of polynomial gets reduced to zero. So I'm saying p of x x plus five. I am interested in finding out zero of this polynomial. What is the value? X equals minus five. So x equals minus five is zero of polynomial. Okay. So it's also called intercept, right? No, no, no. no. Wait, wait for it. Now what I'm saying is, instead of this, I could have said x plus five equals zero. What is this thing? What is this called? This is a linear equation in one variable. Do you are you able to identify this? X plus five equals zero is linear equation in one variable. Now when I ask you guys, what is the solution to this equation? Then you will say x equals minus five. Clear, clear. That's also called root or also called solution to the equation. And what is the zero? Zero is always of polynomial. Solution and root is always of equation. Difference between them. So what is meant by solution of a linear equation? For what values of the variable both the sides are same. So what should I put x equal to here so that when I add 5 to a it becomes 0 and that's it. And if you see here, what is the value of x? Minus 5. Can you find any other value of x? No. no. That means if there is a linear equation in one variable, it will have one, one and only one solution. Clear? Yes. Now, next is, what is meant by finding a zero of a polynomial in two variables or finding the solution of an equation in two variables? Two okay. solutions. Please, please, don't ask if it is legal. Okay? So, Next is solution solution of linear equation in two variables. Linear solution of linear equation in two variables. Yeah, guys, right, you're tired. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Break? Yes, Go out. Go out. I have come back. It's legal. Oh, yeah. You don't even taste the Where comes it? Are you guys understanding what Yes, sir. Huh? Clear? Are you guys clear or not? If it is not clear, go out of the I am not going to explain again. Yes. Yes. Behind the camera, I can clean it. Hey, it's running. At least it looks like it's running. I'll record again. So then you'll have to do So you do that three to four times, no? Six times. Two six. Six times a week. Four MPS. To my center. Teach linear equation in two variables again. Six times a week. Is it? If I give you a video, you can take it. Ask him to I'm proud of Alright. So you tell that in other school. Exactly. Now we have to 
I have an editor also. Anyways, so uh, hey, no break in data. Uh, this this time this time uh, you will see in the guideline we have given. There is something. Uh, there is a no, not now. I am telling you. So the concept of centum coins. So you can earn coins this year, and one coin is worth. Ah, uh, see. That I have not revealed. So you keep earning and you keep redeeming. You can redeem your points. Cash. So I'll, I'll ask Nidhi that okay she, she just both both are taken huh? okay I'll, I'll talk to them so I, I'll talk to them.
there are three solutions. No, no, not two solutions. What I'm trying to say, what is meant by solution? So those values of so x and y. Right? So hence, so linear equation, general, general form of a linear equation in two variables is something like this. Because this is going to be there. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you bully this guy? Huh? Why don't you do something about it? Sir, like, you know, you shouldn't care about all this stuff. No level. No level? Go. Chalo, chalo. Here, attention please. Guys. Anya, I'll throw you out of the window. Okay, here. I am trying to throw him out since last year, but I have been unsuccessful. This time, Pakka has thrown him out. I am trying to make it a little wider. It will be, it will be painful. You are saying this, my word. Here, Chalchul. Ax plus dy plus c equals 0. I have to find out values of x and y. So that means x and y. No, it has to be an ordered pair. So that when I deploy x and y back into the equation, I get c0. How do we do that? What? How do, how do I do that? How do I find x and y such that? Let us say. Don't, don't, don't remember. Listen. Question is 2x plus 3y. Is it a linear equation in 2x? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Okay. So the idea is to solve this. Yes. Solve means get the value of x and y. No, you can have the partition system. Find the value. Give me both. Okay. What's your name? Raghav, can you give me one value of x and y? Such one, one. Is it, is it okay? Yeah. X is x equals one, y equals one. Yeah. yeah. So do we have the solution to this equation? Yeah. The solution is a pair of number, not a single number. It's a a pair of number x equals 1, y equals 1. But is that all? Or can we find some more? Uh, so x is 5, so x is minus 5, y is 5. X is, so one equation is x is 1, uh, sorry, one solution is x is 1, y is 1. Perfect, correct, correct, correct. Anything else? x is equal to minus 5. y is equal to minus 5. y equals 5. y equals 5. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. is it? Yeah. 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 Ah, correct. X equals minus 5, Y equals to 5. Anything else? X equals 4, Y equals 2. X equals? Minus 1. Minus 1 and? Y equals 2. Y equals 2. <coughs> Is it correct? Yeah. Correct? X equals minus 1, Y equals 2. No. 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 X equals minus 1 and Y is 3. Yeah, Y is 3. 9 minus 4. 9 minus 2. Yeah, 9 minus 2. 9 minus 2. X equals minus 2. Y is 3. Now what I am trying to say, hey here, shh, what's your name? I'm sorry, but Minhaj, Minhaj, right? What is your name? So, talk to me. Now, what I'm trying to say is, little here, here, here. What is the what is this thing? Tell me, I'll explain. Go. Which part? 2x plus 3y is 5. Idea is to find out x and y such that this side equals 5. So, who said? Raghav said if you put x equals 1, y equals 1, will you get 5? Correct? If you put minus 5 in x and y, 5 in y, you get minus 10 plus 15. 5. Now if you put x equals to minus 1 and y equals to 2, it doesn't fit in. Doesn't give you 5. Put x equals to minus 2, so it becomes minus 4. Put y equals to 3, it becomes 9. 9 minus 4 is 4. What my point is, do we have some rule in this madness? Or you can just do trial and error. Sir, so, uh, for every value of x, sir, there is a difference. Exactly. So how do I find that out. What is the rule? The rule is this. You have to express one variable in terms of the other variable. And then keep randomly feeding in. In one variable, you keep getting the 
second derivative. So like in this case, it will be x is equal to minus one, y is equal to seven, like this. Yes. So what will it be? So can I write this as p y equals five minus two x? Yeah. All of you are with me on this? Yes. Sir. So can I write y equals five upon three minus two by three x? Yeah. Yeah. All of you agree? Yeah. Yeah. All of you agree? Yes. Sir. No problem. Now you keep putting x value here. You get y value. Put x equals zero. Y will be five by zero. Now put x equals to zero here. Y will be five by zero. Yeah. So you get one solution as zero comma five. Correct. Correct. Now put x equals to one. Y is equal to one. Y will be one. If you put x equals to one, this will become five minus two upon three, which is three upon three, which is one. So another solution is one comma one. This is one minus. So this is one comma. Okay. So likewise, there is no limitation on the value of x. So you will get infinitely many solutions. If you have only one linear equation, just see the difference. If you add one linear equation in one variable, how many solutions? One and only one. But if you have a linear equation in two variables, how many solutions? Infinitely many solutions. And what does it physically signify? That means that a line is made up of infinitely many points. Each point will represent one set of x and y. Right? So each point which is sitting on that line. Its x and y coordinates are nothing but the solution to this equation, right? Yeah. So, if you see, if I have to, you know, uh, let us say, two x plus three y equals to five. Now I am trying to plot this. So, you will get two x plus three y equals five, and y was nothing but uh, five my three minus y. Okay, and then we have got some values: zero comma five by three and one comma one. So it is, you know, to plot a line, two points are good enough. Correct. Only one line can pass through. Okay, zero comma five by three. Let us say this is one. So five by three is one point six seven. So one and two by three. So let us this is one, this is two. So when is the x-axis? So let us say this is I divide it. So this is one. This is two. So zero comma five by three. So this is zero comma five by three is somewhere here. Yeah. Right. And one comma one is somewhere here. Right. Yeah. If I join them, this is the line. Yeah. Right. So basically, two x plus three y y equals five in algebra represents this line. This is two x plus. So if you, want, if you want to see this, a photograph of this is this. And all these points, if you, if you somehow find all these points which are sitting on this line, find the x coordinate, find the y coordinate. If you see this value, let us say this was p comma q. This point has coordinates p comma q. If you fit in p in x and fit in q in y, you get a y. Is that understood? Yeah. So what is meant by solution? Two things. Value of those variables which will satisfy, right? Or you find the coordinates of all the points represented or placed on that particular line. Is this concept clear to all? Yes, sir. So hence one line can have infinite many points, infinitely many points. So hence one line or one linear equation in two variables will have infinite solutions. Solutions clear? The beautiful part is when you have two lines. Okay, yeah. so let's say one line will have infinitely many solutions, but two lines together can have they can have one, one, one none, none, or infinitely many. How? So let us say this was one line right here. Yes, sir. Now let us say I have another line like that. Yeah. So let us say that one point. So just listen to this concept. When we have another line, it must be having an algebraic equation on two variables. Agree? Yes, sir. All of you agree? If there, 
there are two lines, that means both of them will have a unique equation. Agree? Yeah. Now, if they are intersecting, that means there is one and only one point which is lying on the first line as well as on the If I somehow get the values of x and y of that intersecting point or the point of intersection, then I get a solution not only to the first but also to the second equation. Is that clear? So hence, in this case, if there are two equations, how many solutions are there? One. Correct? Now, let us say there is another example. Yeah. And I have another line like that. Are they intersecting? No. They're parallel. When are two lines not intersecting? Uh, they are parallel. So two parallel lines will never have. So there is no single point which lies on both the lines simultaneously. Hence we don't have any solution to parallel lines. Correct? Now there could be another case where one line sits on two the other line. Then all the points which are on the first line are also on the second line. So hence we have infinitely many solutions. So hence, what did we just learn? Sis now we are going into system of system of equation. Whenever there is more than one equation, it is called a System of equations. Now we are talking about system of linear system of linear equations. And we will be doing only linear equation in two variables. So we will be talking about linear equation in two variables. Okay, so least system of linear equation in two variables. Let us say we have a1x plus b1y plus c1 equals 0. And let us say we also have a2x plus b2y plus c2 equals 0. This is equation number 1. This is equation number 2. Okay, now I understand. Now our objective is to find, to solve these. Now where a1, acha, please understand a1, a1, b1, c1 all belong to and a2, b2, c2 all belong to all belong to real right? And please must please understand a1 square plus b1 square will never be why is this important? Both A and B cannot be zero. Either of one can be zero, but both together cannot be zero. To represent that, we put this constraint. A1 square plus B1 square cannot be equal to zero. Why? Because if both A and B become zero, there is no equation. There is no equation. You are equating constant to zero. This is not possible, right? So one. One of them can be zero, but not both. Okay. Similarly, a2 square plus b2 square will never be zero. Okay, a1 can be zero, but b1 cannot be zero. If a1 is zero, then b1 cannot be zero. If b1 is zero, then a1 cannot be zero. Right? And vice versa. Same for the other equation as well. Is that clear to everyone? If that is the this is so this is the system of linear equation in two variables. A1x plus B1y plus C1 equals to 0, A2x plus C2y plus C2 equals to 0, A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, all are real numbers. And both A1, B1 and both A2, B2 cannot be zero simultaneously. You know it? This is when it is this, then this is called linear equation. Understood to all? By all? Yeah. Yeah. Now in this chapter. What are the way forward? What are we going to do? Now we are going to learn how to solve. This entire chapter revolves around how to solve linear equation. There are two methods of solving. One is called graphical method. Another is called algebraic. You have studied all this last time? Yeah. 
making sense. We will teach you both. Don't worry. Now. Okay, so I am going to discuss, let us say, uh, solving linear equation. Yes, guys. Yeah, there is an error. 
So it was x minus y over 7. So you know, you're, you know, so you put the values back and check. Right? So this is one way of solving it. Substitution is very easy looking, but it's very lengthy. At times it will become very my preferred way is either I use Kramer's rule or I go for elimination. It's much more simpler. What is elimination now? So we use the same equation. We are going to do elimination. So elimination as the word as the, as the name suggests, you eliminate one of the variables. Subtract 1 from 2 or 2 from 1, whichever. 
So how do we do it? So best way is not to make mistake is you just write minus here and then delete it by minus here <laughs> and you put minus here and then add. You understood for that? Yeah. I change the signs. 2x plus 3y equals 4 will be equal to minus 2x minus 3y equals minus 4 and then you add. When you add this, 2x minus 2x is 0. Minus 2y minus 3y. Minus 18. Minus 18. Does it match with the previous solution? Yes sir. Break it for 